I do carry a socket set and I'll probably show that in a different video. Turbo. Hey, what's up guys? Jim Murphy here from You Break It, You Fix It. And today I'm getting ready to swap my tools over from my old truck to my new truck. And a question I get asked a lot is what tools do I carry in my truck? So I went through and I made a list of the set seven essentials, the seven essentials that I don't leave home without, even if I take a rental car. All right, welcome back. Let's get right down to it. I love this topic because I used to carry a full-blown service station in my truck, floor jack, all this stuff. And I did that with my old truck and we were putting on, a, putting on a lot more miles and it was a lot older. And with this new truck, I feel like I need to trim down my stock. I advertise myself as a minimalist when it comes to stuff and I need to eat my own cooking and practice what I preach. So I'm trying to do that in the new truck, narrow everything down. But that's not what this, that this video is about. I'll, I think I'll make another video in regards to that. What I want to talk about today is what are the essentials I bring when I'm in any vehicle, even a rental car. And I'll tell you a couple stories about rental cars as I go through and the problems we've had with brand spanking new rental cars. <laughs> so this list is designed for inconveniences. As I said, I used to carry every tool known to man practically. I think I even carried a torque wrench. Insane. Because you're not going to rebuild an engine on the side of the road. That's just it. And you can't prepare for every scenario. You, you can. I mean, you can carry around a whole service truck. A few of my friends do, and it works for them. So you could do that. But it's just a lot of weight, a lot of extra stuff. And in the climate I live in, tools just get rusty sitting out in trucks, so I hate to do that. So this is my essentials list. Very first thing, sounds ridiculous, water. And not this little guy, I actually carry a whole gallon of water anywhere we go in a vehicle. And there's a reason why. My wife and I rented a car and we were driving from Salt Lake City to, I think, Eastern Washington State. And in the middle of nowhere in Montana, the car started overheating. It had a thousand miles on it. And it turns out from the dealership, someone had stabbed a hole in the radiator. They swapped the new radiator in it and they didn't top off the coolant before it left the Hertz rental car place. So there we were in the middle of Montana and luckily we had a cooler with ice in it and we let the ice melt out in the sun and pour that into the radiator and one person stopped and offered us water and that helped us out too. So now I always carry water and not just for the cooling system. You know, if you get debris in your eye, you can flush your eye, eyes out with it. And as humans, we need water. So that's a very important thing to have in the vehicle. So water is key. I take that everywhere. And let's see, my next one, a light. And not just any light. So if you're like me, you leave lights sitting in your vehicle all the time. And what happens to them? But the batteries, the batteries go dead when you're sitting there. So when you actually need it, the battery's dead. So this little guy, I'll probably put a link down in the description for this because I love this light. It has a little solar pad. I haven't used that. I really don't care. But what, what it does have is this hand crank. So no matter what, even if this thing is dead when I get in my truck and go to use it, I can crank the handle and get some juice out of it and see what I'm doing. Because you can't tell what's wrong with your vehicle unless you can see. And you typically don't break, out, break down in the most convenient times. It's usually at night. So that's my number two. My number three, jumper cables. I cannot believe how many people that we've stopped and helped in parking lots that just needed to jump but didn't have jumper cables. They had access to other vehicles, but three, four vehicles between all of them, they didn't have jumper cables. And that's something I've carried since I was 16 years old and got my driver's license. I always carried jump, jumper cables. I've used them a lot. I've probably used jumper cables more than any tool in my entire truck. My next in inconvenience tool. What else happens when you're out on the road? You run debris over, you get a hole in your tire. I always carry a 12 full air compressor. Yes, I carry this in rental cars. Absolutely, without a doubt. I actually have a smaller one that I carry in smaller vehicles, but this one's good for bigger, heavier, heavier duty truck tires. It open, I'll put a link down in the description for this one too. There, there are so many out in the market. I mean, read reviews, do your own research, but this is the one I like. Um, it opens up into a little kit. There's like an air hose in this section and I, I won't dig it all out. I don't want to bore you to death with that. But I also, one thing I carry in here too is a tire repair kit. So, I should do a whole separate video on that because I have plugged so many tires out on the road. It's unbelievable. I used, as I said, as you guys probably know that I've been filing for a while, I used to work for a body shop. I would always pick up screws in the parking lot so I constantly had holes in my tires and I would just, I would just plug them and be done with it. So I kind of, but kind of from, living on a farm and doing that, I 
became pretty proficient at just plugging the tire. I don't even swap spares on anymore. I just, unless there's a gash in the tire. Um, so kind of a two for there, air compressor, tire repair kit. Um, and again, the tire repair kits, they're not all created equally. There are some pretty garbage ones out there. So get a really good one. It's a lifeline, you know, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, like we usually are, it's important. My next one, you guys are gonna laugh, zip ties. Zip ties you can do just about anything with. You know, despite, you know, tying up a hot part, like an exhaust or something like that, you're not gonna do that. I used to carry tie wire. I, I also carry tie wire, but this is my essentials kit. But the zip tie, you can fix a lot of stuff with. You know, even if, uh, you know, we were, we were in a scenario where a bunch of cars had had an accident around us and a few of them were, this is in the middle of Arizona in the middle of nowhere. And I was able to zip tie their bumpers up and stuff and just get them back on the road. So they, they didn't have to be towed and they were more than happy to have me do that and ecstatic and ecstatic. They didn't have to pay a very expensive tow bill. So carry zip ties. And next one of my favorites, vice grips. Not necessarily needle nose vice grips like this. This is just the first thing I grabbed on my truck, but the, you know, like the heavier duty player jaw, I don't know, someone can tell me in the comments what they're called. Um, vice grips, lifeline, lifeline, lifeline. I'll, I'll be the first to admit there is not a socket set on this list. I do carry a socket set. I'll probably show that in a different video because I love the socket set I have for just storing in a vehicle. And I'll explain that in another video. But vice grips can can and will do anything. I mean, they even have a little nipper in there to cut the vi to cut the zip ties off and cut little pieces of tubing or wire or whatever you need to do. And they are a handy wrench screwdriver. You can turn whatever fastener you need to with this pretty pretty much. Bend metal, use it as a hammer. I mean, I typically whatever vehicle I'm rolling in, I have a pair of vice grips. My last thing on the list isn't specific to a vehicle. Everyone should carry a pocket knife. They can and will do anything you need to do for the most part. I've used these as hammers, as pry tools, a cutting tool, a screwdriver. I mean, it's the, the possibilities are only limited to your imagination. In this, for my daily carry pocket knife, I really don't like the term EDC. That's, it's kind of, kind of overused now, but this is definitely my favorite everyday carry. You know, you don't want to go out and buy the sexy tactical knives and stuff like that. You just need something that works. That's it. You're going to beat the crap out of it. You might as well just buy something cheap that just works. And I like this one because it has a regular pocket knife blade. I don't know if I can get it in there with a serrated edge too. Can I get that? And so that's what I use as my pry tool predominantly, but also has a razor knife built into it, which is nice because you always have a razor sharp blade. I mean, e blade to do everything which is nice and you can flip the flip the blade around and I just carry an extra pack of razor blades in my truck so that way I always have a sharp blade. But if you're gonna carry one in a vehicle, specifically, I didn't grab mine, but I always have a multi-tool also because then you get the, you know, the needle nose, you get the needle nose plier benefit and screwdrivers and all my and bottle openers, all sorts of crap in there. So multi-tool is a good idea. But I've got one surprise bonus for you guys and I kind of thought of this last minute, that's why. You're gonna think I'm nuts. Simple code reader. Always, always carry this. I always carry it. This is a pretty cheap one. Um, you don't need anything expensive and why? Like this guy's nuts, why is he carrying a code reader? Because how many times have you had a check engine light come on and you're like, I wonder what that is. Like, is it serious or is it just some silly little code? And you know, with my older truck over there, I would get a mass airflow code quite a bit in the summertime. Like I think oil was coming through the uh, aftermarket filter or something and gumming it up. Um, and so I was able to know like, yeah, it's the mass air, it's that mass air code. It's not, you know, it's not gonna cause catastrophic engine damage. So it was just, this is for peace of mind. So again, we had a rental car, the check engine light came on and guess who had a code reader and guess who figured out? It's like, oh, okay, whatever. It's just some little simple little thing I don't have to worry about. And it saved our entire trip. So. I think this is 50 bucks. I'll try to put a link down in the description for that. And so that's it guys. There is my essentials kit that I will not leave the driveway without, even in a rental car, even in a brand new car, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you a quick story before I go. I bought a nice newer truck thinking I wasn't gonna have to work on it ever again and it has already left me stranded once. So 
It doesn't matter the mileage, it doesn't matter how new it is, it has the potential to leave you stranded and you must be prepared. And again, these are just the, like I said, these are the inconvenience items. That's what you're gonna come up against the most. You're not gonna rebuild a rear end, you're not gonna rebuild an engine in a parking lot, I mean, maybe, but you know, odds are it's gonna be a dead battery, a flat tire, a code, you know, a loose bolt somewhere, low on, you know, low on coolant, just these little things. So carry these, prepare yourself, and I'll see you again in another video. This is Jim Murphy on You Break It, You Fix It, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.